Anybody else? Um, I think I'll be sorry. Okay. Yeah, you can. So hello everyone. Welcome to the introduction to the birding lecture. Um, today we have Professor uh, Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> 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 My us, brother um, calls me Daryl. Okay. <laughs> and he'll give us um, an introduction to birding and It'll be very interactive, so and you can ask questions if you want during the lecture. Okay, okay. So, thank you. Thanks, Jasper. So I wanted to start by just asking you uh, why you are here. Anybody? Yes. I love birds. You love birds. Why do you love birds? Because they are they're just so far away from. They're so far away from us? Yeah. You but mean, then we see them like all the time, but then we can't reach them. So they're kind of far away distance wise? Yeah. And, and we can't reach That's a really neat reason. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's one I haven't heard before. But that's really cool. We can see them, but they still seem kind of far away. So you might want to know more about them because they seem kind of far. You might, yeah. Any other? Just expanding my horizon. Uh huh. Expanding your horizon. Yeah. yeah. More plants. More plants. <laughs> You'd like to know more about what feeds yeah. on the plants. Uh, and and my friend who had a vertebrate class in the last summer said that birds are the smartest creature of all other that might take over human if they really want to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So yes, my. That's why I know more about that. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch out for those crows and ravens and parrots. Um, anybody else? Yeah. 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 You're one of the executives, right? Okay, well, I just thought birds are everywhere because, well, unlike us, they can fly, and so they're not really limited to being in one place. And I, and like, no matter where you go, you'll find birds. I guess that's kind of true about humans, but that's why we're so interesting too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess they're just really pre pre prevalent everywhere, yeah. and then to learn more about them is something I'd be interested in. And that, that's actually, I think, the re well, all of these reasons bring up um, why birding is such a popular activity, because we can see them, we can see them in lots of places. You can go to the North Pole and be on the ice, and you'll see birds fly over. Can go to Everest and you know be hiking up Everest wearing an oxygen tank to get up there, like one one step per minute. Then you look up and there are bar-headed geese flying over. Um, there are birds that um, penguins that dive down several hundred meters into the into the ocean. So the only place on Earth that you don't find birds is in the deep sea, but um, everywhere on the surface of the Earth you can you can see birds and. Uh, I think that's why one reason they're so popular. Um, so let's pull up my uh, presentation here. <coughs> and um, yeah, I think really all these reasons are, are essentially that birds are fun. They're, they're really fun, and they're part of the natural world that we can um, observe with our own eyes and with our ears, and, and we don't have to go to too much trouble uh, to observe them. We just have to be kind of aware. Um, I'm sure all of you walked past many birds today, and you could probably hear many birds, but not everybody is really aware of that all the time, because especially in our modern age where we have all our MP3 players and our cell phones and and everything, we often lose awareness of the natural world around us. And a lot of people get great enjoyment from sort of reconnecting with the natural world. So I think birding is a way into that. And uh, that's all, I, I don't need to sell you all on that because you're all here today, but, but it's a great um, thing. So I'm debating between turning the lights off and then it's too dark or leaving them on and then you can't see. So maybe I'll just switch back and forth. But, um, so I'm Darren Irwin, and uh, I'm a professor here in the Biodiversity Research Center. I, my research is on um, speciation. So if there's one thing, if you can capture in a single word what I study, it's speciation. And that means how does one species gradually change into two? 
But I won't be talking about that today. Today I'm going to try to give an intro to birding. That's what um, Jasper and Leah asked me to, uh, to talk about. Does anyone first, can anyone uh, say what these are? Species, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect to the species. Warblers? Warblers, thank you. Very good. So how do you know they're warblers? They're small, their size and their coloration. Okay, good. So their size, also their shape probably. You're probably judging by their shape. The shape of the beak, the shape of the body, and their coloration. A lot of warblers are, are yellowish. And so uh, that's good. You, you notice, you kind of classify them to the group. And that's what I want to emphasize today with birding, that if you can, um, when you're a beginning birder, don't worry when you see a bird about identifying exactly what species it is. You don't have to figure out exactly what species. The most important thing is to identify what general group of bird is it in. So you identify their warblers. Then you know to look into your book, oh, I need to look at the warbler section. And then you can start to say, OK, what's the one with the black mask and so forth? It happens to be a common yellow throat. Um, but that's how you want to think about birding, is, is learning the groups of birds and, and trying to uh, identify the group and then into the species. So, um, so that will be sort of a theme as I go through this today. So I, I tried to come up with sort of types of birding in this. Um, and there, there's various groups of, of people interested in birds out there. Probably the largest is the, the um, people who are interested in, uh, you know, they, they, they love feeding birds. So they set up a feeder in their backyard, or we have some hanging off the building here. And it's just fun to watch birds coming to the feeder. And uh, that's, there's millions of people that do that. And it's pretty cool because now there are citizen science projects on the web where, you, where people doing that can actually enter data into a database at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And, and we generate distributions. Of, um, of species using those data. Then there's people that, that sort of make the transition from that step to learning local birds in their neighborhood, start to get interested in things a little farther than their, their own feeder. Um, that might lead to, to bird watching, actually taking note of their behavior, thinking why is the bird doing that, why is that, that one uh, chasing that one, and so forth. Um, and then there's kind of a jump into this this behavior, and this can reach sort of a pathological level in some people. Um, that's true birding, and that's where you keep lists of everything you see. And so, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a, a pathological birder. Um, I I like keeping track when I go to rifle bird observatory or, or um, different areas. I like writing down what I see. So I keep a little notebook like this, and I just um, when I go with my kids to, to Jericho or, or something like that. I, I just write down a little list of all the species I see and the numbers. And then later, if I have the energy, I enter it into the computer. And uh, that way, years later, I can keep track of what I saw and where. But some people get very competitive about this. And they go to on a competitive bird. And I'm not kidding. This is competitive birding. That there are, are, there's a birding. Uh, uh, society called the American Birding Association, and they will print lists every year of who saw the most birds in all of North America, within each province and state, uh, within a single day, within a single um, month, uh, within a single week. They have all these, these categories where people can essentially compete to see the most species within a given period of time and a given spatial area. And uh, have any of you seen the movie uh, The Big Year? No? It's, it's in the theaters now. It's, it's uh, got Jack Black and S Steve Martin and uh, who else? Owen Wilson. So it's sort of a comedy um, about some competitive birders that are trying to see the most species they can in North America in a year. Then there's some people doing uh, photographic birding. That's kind of with digital cameras. That's a really popular thing now. So people go and take photos and post them to websites, Flickr and so forth. Some of the pictures I have are from there. 
Um, then in the more professional things, you have biodiversity surveys. So people that are good at birding can actually get paid to do it. And they can go out and survey. Usually it's surveying an area that's about to be destroyed by development. So it's a bit sad. But anytime there's a mine put in or a, a, a timber project, um, the company has to survey the area so they can document if there are any endangered species there and exactly what um, habitat they're destroying. So a lot of people who are good at birding get hired to do this. And then there's research on specific species, and that's kind of where I am. But And I started doing this before any of this, so I'm sort of an unconventional approach where I started studying birds from an academic perspective. And then I'm getting more and more interested in, in birds, per se. And feel free to interrupt with questions or comments anytime. And birding is very easy to begin. You just have to take note of a bird that you see um, and, and just get interested. But then it, what's neat about it is you never feel like you master it. There's always, there's 9,300 species in the world. Each one has males and females and juveniles and different plumages, different seasonal patterns, different ranges, and so there's a lot to learn. Different songs, um, so it's really fun. Birding gear, I decided, okay, for intro birding um, lecture, I would talk about gear because um, if you look at um, birding websites or magazines, they might try to sell you a lot of things. But my message to you is you don't need to buy a lot of things to become a good birder. You need your brain, primarily. That's the most important thing. I, I, you, need, you, you, you need it because you need to use perception. You need to really perceive, really see what you're seeing and think about what you're hearing. You need to analyze it with respect to what you know. And you need to check with your memory about, did I see a similar species here last year? Have I seen some other bird that's similar to that one that will help me figure out what it is? You need your ears, and I rank this above your eyes, actually. In my own, since I study warblers and wrens and these little forest things, they're, they're hard to see often. But if you can hear well, and you pay attention to what you're hearing, you can really figure out, you can stand there with your eyes closed and name the 10 or 12 species that are sitting around you. And it's, it's a fun thing to do. Of course, it helps to see the bird as well and take note of what you're seeing. Um, then it's really important to have a good notebook or sketchbook to, to write down uh, what you're seeing, because you'll forget otherwise. But the simple act of writing things down, even if you never look at it again, it, it helps solidify in your memory what you're seeing. And if, if you're even, you know, even if you're not a good artist, trying to draw little sketches, um, just drawing like a very uh, almost stick figure bird, but then pointing, you know, it was yellow here and black here and had a white ice stripe or whatever. That can help you remember what you saw and later on you can think about what it, what it was. And this, this is really important in submitting um, reports of rarities. So rarity is a bird that's not um, commonly seen in a certain area. Uh, and there are committees, so British Columbia has a committee that's in charge of looking at reports from birders and saying, are we actually accepting this as an official report of this rare bird seen in British Columbia? And they're much more likely to accept your report if you've got a good, um, a good written description of what you saw, when you saw it, or you wrote a sketch, or even a, a photo is great as well. Um, you need a good, good bird book, but notice I'm making the font smaller here. So it's not as important as that other stuff, but you really want to get a good bird book that has all the birds in the region that you're birding. So this is a good one. There are other ones that are, are good for Western North America. You want to be careful that you buy one for Western North America rather than Eastern North America. They're very different regions in terms of birds. And that's because of the ice ages, separated things. Um, and you want to, uh, okay, binoculars, of course, 
can be very useful, but they're not as important as the things above it. So you can do a lot of good birding with your own eyes, uh, without binoculars, but by listening and seeing what you can see up close. You need to be comfortable out there. A good friend who knows something about birds can really help you um, become a better birder quite quickly. Uh, camera and microphone um, recording equipment for sounds can be helpful. Spotting scope if in certain environments, like if you're at, at a, um, if you're looking at shorebirds, the spotting scope is often very useful. Uh, map is good so you can know where you are and you can document like where you saw these different things. And then in very small print, I put iPhone or other MP3 playing device. So these, for, I th think for advanced birders, once you get pretty good at it, it's really good to have one of these. Um, iPhone applications where you can look up birds and play their songs and so forth. But I think it's hard to actually use those if you're not a fairly good birder already because it's you don't you see a new thing and you don't